But I'd love to go back to, you know, working with Omar because I know you worked with the... Uh, obviously, you worked on that the new project with the Mars Volta, but did you also work on the architecture? Like, did you record some, some stuff for that album? I think so. I think so. <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't realize when I when I was doing it, actually. <laughs> you know, I, Omar and I, we, we just go way back and we work on, on, on stuff all the time. And... Mm. And sometimes when he when he's here or when I'm at his place, we just work at various stuff that ends up being a Mars Volta record or a solo record or a soundtrack of something. Right. So and yes, then we did something years back, which then become part of Amputecture, I guess. Right. But how how is it working with him, for example? Because I I mean obviously I know his music and you know the various bands he's been in, but sometimes it gets very complex like there's a lot of stuff going on i mean do, do, do uh, you feel ever lost working on his projects like oh what the hell is going on or he's very methodical or how does he like to work with you oh i i have no idea what he likes about me to be honest i, I just he's just he it's so hard to describe because the second we get together it just clicks and we both do our thing, and that's fun. I can't even tell if it's good or not, because because that's not what it is about. It's never about the result. It's it's always just about doing what we want to do, and um, same same with the box set we did with our label. You know, the Mars Volta, La Realidad de los Sueños box set. It's just something Omar and I wanted to do, and that was the result. Right. It's it's always about the process. It's always about the, about the process. And of course, but, I mean, yeah. he's a he's a fucking musical genius, I guess. And he wouldn't call himself that. I mean, nobody would, but he he doesn't even really call him as, himself a musician, right? Or a guitarist. He hates that. Right. He started referring to himself as a multi multimedia artist, which I found weird because I, <laughs> I, I can tell you why. Because we did a couple of records just analog with no computers switched on. And multi multimedia artist always has this kind of screen feel to me. I don't know why. Right, right, right. I always right. I imagine... Yeah, I always imagine multimedia artists sitting in front of a screen, and I know for a fact that Omar hates that. And yeah, yeah. So, but but uh, but but I think the definition, like, because he's he's so um, he does so many things. You know, he's a filmmaker, he's a writer, he's an arranger, producer, whatsoever. Um, yeah. It reminds me of Frank Zappa a bit, you know, he can just spit out records, complex records, films. Yeah, uh, yeah it's very similar in, in that aspect, you know. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, true. And I, I read this, uh, I think it was an interview you guys posted on your Facebook page, the Cloud Hills Facebook page, uh, an interview with Omar and Cedric. And uh, I might be wrong here, but he says something along the lines of you, you, you were pointing out, out some workflow stuff and that led to the box that eventually, um, I don't know if you remember this, but do you remember what that sort of workflow thing was that you helped him improve on? Um, I, I don't think he meant that like in, in a very particular way. I think right. he, I think what he meant was, um, I think it goes back to the to the little story I told you about, dude. Let's chill, and me understanding that chill is <laughs> yeah. is potentially endless, and it needs to be potentially endless to be productive. Um, but also, I think for him, it's good to have someone someone in in the background with a certain kind of structure. And I think we just hugely benefit from each other. I I, I I extremely benefit from his his way of working, like I described it. And I think it's also the other way around. 
I don't constantly want to refer to me as a German because that's that that sucks. <laughs> But well, but you know what I mean when I say yeah, German, yeah, yeah. right? Like that yeah, German yeah, yeah. accuracy and Rigid. being on time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and um, so maybe it's maybe it's that it's just two extremes. Right, right. But but we 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 have a common ground, and that's here in the studio, and and way beyond because we made films together, uh, and 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 many other things. Ah, he's just a he's just a very inspiring person, and yeah. I hope he can say the same about me. So maybe Probably. it's just that. But how did you guys initially meet? I mean, was that back when he was in De facto? What was that? No, 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 not that long ago. No, no, it was. Right. Um, that was in two thousand five, I think, or two thousand six. We met through a mutual friend. Um, like a person from Hamburg, and and I th I think that person introduced us, but only virtually. Was like, hey, that's my friend Johan. He's got a cool studio. Blah blah blah. And I was working on a, I was working on a fun studio project, and at that time in two thousand five or two thousand six. And I know that he was promoting, I guess it was Francis the Mute over here in Europe. And then he gave me a call <laughs> and said a thing only Americans can say. Uh, and I mean, continental America. Um, he said, hey, I'm in Europe. I can be at your place in seven hours <laughs> so so he is actually in he was actually in paris i guess right. but it felt really close to hamburg for him so he just took the train from paris to to hamburg came here played a solo on my fun project and we talked all night and then he left and i think the next next thing i remember was a similar story when he was in Berlin and gave me a call and said, like, hey, I'm in Berlin. What are you up to? And I'm like, hey, I'm in Hamburg. Um, I'm working on this project. You want to join? And he said, yeah, sure. I just jump on the train. I just have to be back tomorrow morning for the interview. Like, no problem. And then there was a strike going on and the... Um, the train, no, no train was between Berlin and Hamburg. So I thought, ah, shit, I really want to have him on this project. What are I going to do? Uh, I just called him a cab. And that's, um, and that's almost 300 kilometers from Berlin wow. to Hamburg. <laughs> yeah, yeah, shit. And I think, I don't know, I think I paid, I don't know what it was, like 500 euros for the cab one way. And then he's like, oh, can you call me a cab? I need to go back to Berlin in the night <laughs> and then you have to find that cab driver who does that kind of drive for another 500 bucks. Wow. So, but that's this, that investment of a thousand euros, you know, I think we both knew that obviously for that project I was working on, that, that was madness, but we kind of were already in love and we thought, Hey, it's a long-term investment. And it was because he knew, okay, it might sound weird, but, if you look at it on the long run, it's totally reasonable. Hmm. That's awesome, man. Love that story. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that's um, a lot of a lot of cab money to pay. But yeah, I mean, definitely. That's something that probably is like, damn. But in the end, it's like, you know, fuck it. Dude, it. just look where we are now. Just look at that. Yeah, yeah. Look at that box set. Look at what we did with, I don't know, at the drive-in with Bosnian Rainbows, with the Cloud Silt Tapes, part one, two, three. We did so many records together. Mm -hmm. And then just look at that small investment of getting friends of 1,000 euros, of getting a cap from Berlin and back. I know it sounds weird. And when you tell that to a German, that German might be, oh, well, but you made a huge uh, <laughs> minus on that day. And, and you're like, dude, just, just zoom back and get the bigger picture. Yeah, yeah, exactly, man. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you guys connected and... Oh, me too. Uh, 
<laughs> I mean, because <clears throat> it sounds to me also that your relationship, which I have a similar relationship, not to compare myself to you guys, but I, there's a producer friend, a, a musician I, I, I used to work with a lot, where it sounds to me I felt the same way or feel the same way working with him as you do, do with Omar, where you as a producer, engineer, you, you have the freedom to express yourself and they just let you do it and obviously you let Omar do his thing and those yeah. those those working relationships are really awesome you know that it feels really I know I'm happy for you that you have that it's a rare thing and mm. it's the most important thing um it's the most important thing in the studio it is exactly exactly I yeah. just read this interview with Arnold Schwarzenegger mm. um the other day which I don't know it's it's not about him, but he was someone asked him a funny question. He asked him, "What's what's your I don't know training secret? What's the most important aspect of training, like bodybuilding? That's what he did, right?" And he said, um, "The right training partner." Right. And ah, that was right. Of course, you always see those sporty guys hanging around there's always two guys right when you train alone it's when you see a guy train alone it's always weird you need that counterpart you need someone to i don't know to motivate you or to to force you to eat when you need to eat or force you to take a break when you have to take a break and mm -hmm. it's a very very important thing to have definitely yeah it's it's, it's so true very true <clears throat> and working on this this new box set, um, I don't really know how, if I can pronounce it correctly in Spanish, but let's say in English, the reality of dreams, I guess it is, right? Um, what was the process of putting that, that together? Because that's just such a huge <laughs> undertaking. But and obviously it's sold out, so no one can get it anymore. Uh, I tell you, there's some more of it. Is, is, can you yes. say that? Or <laughs> yeah, yeah, not not a thousand right. ones, but we we held back a couple of. A couple right. of box sets. Couple of so, no, 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 just a couple <laughs> of thousands. Oh, right, right, <laughs> just a couple. Right. Of, you know, there were some, there were some cancellations, some order cancellations because what? people saw it like for twenty bucks, bucks cheaper on Amazon, so they canceled their order and bought it on Amazon. Most wow, of okay. the people who did that, then Amazon canceled their pre-order, so they ended up having none. Wow. Stupid. Yeah, it's not about getting the cheapest option, but. Anyways, we collected those canceled orders and it's, I don't know, 50 or 100, I don't know, something in that range. And we're going to release that on release day and obviously uh, tell people that like, I don't know, 48 hours in advance on social media, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, well, the process of it all, it's actually... Um, ...24 months. Wow. Yeah. So I think more or less on this day, two years ago, I had a phone call with Omar and he talked about another project I can't talk about at this point. But that project lead, led us through to, to the vinyls and him being in possession of the vinyl rights. Mm. And so... He wanted Cloud Till to take care of that, so we did. And then it was just a really long process, a very complicated contract situation, a very, because we're friends, you know, and when you're friends, you have to have a very, very watertight contract. Right. It has to be more precise, more precise um, than than a contract between just some random right. person, people. Makes sense. Yeah, so because because it needs to be able to really protect your friendship, right? So and um, so we did that. That took a while. Then then we got all the mixes. Then we got all the then then we remastered it. Then we got all the artwork. Not all the artwork was available, so we had to actually buy some of the originals. I spent like two thousand bucks. Another investment that doesn't really make sense at the time, because you know I had the rights, I purchased the rights, and then mm. I had to buy those 
there's those horrendously expensive <laughs> records on Discogs, and I, yeah. I literally spent like two or three grand just just to buy those fucking vinyls I already own the rights of. So that was funny, actually. I, I hated it, but when I look back at it, it was funny. So, mm. and then we had to scan the artwork and then obviously do modifications because we had to add our logo or Mars logo, correct some credits, do the, add the new mastering guys and new management, all that kind of credits. Correct some mistakes, you know that on the, that deal house in the Comatorium, the original vinyl has the wrong cover. Mm -hmm, so yeah. the golden, the egghead guy it was supposed to be the back cover and the jellyfish man who on that universal pressing was the back cover is the original. So we had to change that and a couple of other things. And well, Omar is just in love with details. And that was a very, very long process. I don't know, maybe six months or so. Right. Because he's busy, I'm busy. There's the time difference. We cut what we weren't always able to get on the phone. So hmm. it's just a very, very long process. And then we had to de design that thing, had to come up with the artwork, and ah. But did you have to send, or did he come to the studio to like listen to the test pressings and the masters? Was that just sending back and forth, or? Um, I did that. I Omar obviously was on copy was co like cc'd in every email but um i spent the first COVID lockdown in may last year listening to every single mass volta record out there <laughs> just on my record player at home my family just went crazy and i'm like <laughs> sorry <laughs> it's my job <laughs> yeah, yeah no yeah. I, yeah, no, I did that and he approved it. It's just doing stuff like that, like an, a, a retrospective thing, is just a lot of work because it involves so many people and so many feelings, you know? There's this whole story about Landscape Tantrums, the original unreleased, unfinished recordings of De Laos and the Comatorium. So we had like 10 pages, Stevie Chick, a Guardian journalist, right? 10 pages of liner notes about that process, about at the drive-in falling apart, about Omar founding the Mars Volta, about Landscape Tantrums being recorded and then being re-recorded or reproduced by Rick Rubin. So that whole process is in that box set. It's described very well, so I, I won't go into details. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, sure. Because I can't, and, and mm. yeah. That's, yeah. I was just thinking about what you just said about the story, but yeah, obviously, let, let's leave that for the people who buy the box set, and hopefully I can get my hands on one of them too <laughs> when they become available. Sure. Um, but yeah, is it, how many records is there again? Is it five, six, maybe seven? Yeah, it's sick. Well, in the box set, it's it's the six main records plus the unreleased record plus two unreleased B sides. Right. So in total, it's it's eighteen twelve inches in the box set. Right. And he looks awesome. So man. That, I mean, well done. That on, makes on, on, on... Yeah, yeah, so yeah. It makes a total of it makes a total of ninety thousand records that we had to press. Right. And um, maybe that sets the the retail price in perspective because we're not getting rich with that project. It's 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 very expensive to manufacture ninety thousand records and five thousand box sets. I can imagine. I can imagine. But yeah, I mean, still well done putting it all together because people are going crazy for it. I mean, I see on 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 yeah, like Reddit all the time, like people posting their their box set. You know, it's cool. I mean, it's a Nice I know we should have done we should have done ten thousand we should have done ten thousand but we yeah, did it'll be alright man people survive um, but something <laughs> some, something they I'd need like to, to chill <laughs> do you see it too or what do do you see a lot of people asking you for for more records too or do you get a lot of emails about it every day like twenty wow it's a passionate fan base which is great obviously i love it you know i love it i'm active in all those not every day but i'm active in all those fan groups i just think it's 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 a responsibility i have i think those fans are just absolutely amazing and it's the obviously it's the foundation of 
of any band out there and it's just so shitty how fans get treated from labels just as customers and they they don't care about all the passion and and i know that i know that many people who run record companies i know they have like lots on their plates and stuff and nobody has time for anything but well i have lots on my plate too and i still can answer to email sometimes it takes a day sometimes two but i think almost anyone can do it mm. and so so when people write to our usual email address most of the time it's just me responding because right. why not why shouldn't i yeah yeah i mean i guess that goes back to what you said about doing uh good work <clears throat> yeah. excuse me you know where it's you know like you mentioned Sometimes you have to make coffee and stuff, but it is still all those small details, you know, creates a bigger picture. Yeah. And I mean, communication, that's it. That, it's what I said in the very beginning of this, of this chat, you know, you have to listen, you have to listen. And, and that's, that can be fun, you know, that can be fun and, and conversations can be fun. Obviously I get weird emails too. Um, and, and I get what, what are some get of the emails you've got that are weird and weird emails like um, ah, just recently what was that like uh, because like some 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 people who ordered their box sets at Bandcamp in the US right we sent them out like two weeks ago because we experienced that with the Cloud Silk tapes during COVID it sometimes took like three months for right for the regular mail to, from, from Hamburg to the U S and we wanted to have the people, one of the people to have the box sets on time. So we sent them out four weeks earlier and apparently some of them just got them after a week. So w which was wow. three weeks in advance of the actual release date. And people saw that online and got mad about it and like, dude, why Bandcamp? Why not me? Why that fucking guy? And I'm like, <laughs> chill, do chill. It's it's not in our hands. It's like, it's mm. it's COVID, and we can't control it. And he's like, refund. Really? I have two words. I have Shit. two words for you: refund. I'm like, no problem. You get a <laughs> refund. You get a refund. No problem. And then he was like, oh, no, okay, no, I'm good, I'm good, sorry. So okay. what I experience is that the minute you take, you start to take people seriously, because you should, um, uh, uh, um, it, it'll come back to you. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's so funny, people going mad about the vinyl, because it's not like it can be shared on social, like, uh, on shared online, because you cannot really pirate the vinyl. So, you know, the experience will still be there for him when he gets it, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, you need, that guy needs to chill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I mean, the people would also. I mean, I, I don't want to make you say stuff you don't want, you can't say. Uh, but I, I think a lot of the, these Mars Volta fans would would be very happy with the new Mars Volta record. And I don't want to. I don't know if that's what's going on, but hopefully that's what's going on. Um, but I guess you cannot. You cannot say if that's what's happening. No. <laughs> No, I'm not in the I'm not in the position to. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Let's not uh, break any uh, unnecessary NDAs or something like that. <laughs> oh, I um, haven't signed any NDA. That's not that's not pos That's not necessary. But um, right, right. you know, it, it doesn't matter what I say now. People will just twist. Yeah, my yeah, take it and spin it. 